Hey guys, how's it going? It's your good buddy Sam, and this is another Max MSP tutorial. Uh, sorry if my voice sounds a little bit scratchy, but um, yeah, I just woke up, so I'm doing this tutorial right away first thing in the morning. Literally, roll out of bed, uh, pour myself a scotch, and fire up Max. So, you know, just, just another Friday. Um, so what I wanted to cover today was how to do a stutter effect. Um, when I say stutter effect, what I mean is playing short chunks of an audio file um, you know, looped so that you emphasize their, their sort of de-emphasize the actual character of the sound and bring out you know, these rhythmic qualities that you didn't really know were there. And in my mind, that's a big part of what Max is all about is getting, um, getting stuff out of sound that uh, it wasn't immediately obvious was there to begin with. So to start, we're going to need a buffer tilde object. Uh, buffer tilde holds a name chunk of uh, data. It could be audio. Usually it's audio, but you know, it could be whatever. And an info tilde object. Um, Info tilde reports the state of a buffer object when it gets a bang in its right in its inlet, um, and buffer sends a bang out its right outlet when it finishes reading. We're also going to need a phaser object. This phaser is going to be the the part of our uh, patch that loops. Phaser just goes um, linearly between zero and one, and then jumps back to one, so it kind of looks like a sawtooth. And we're going to use a play tilde object. Play tilde loop. Play <clears throat> just plays through a buffer. Um, so it takes the its input to be milliseconds and then plays the audio at that many milliseconds. So if you send it 500, it would play the sample at the 500th millisecond into the buffer. So because of that, um, we're going to need to multiply the output of phaser, which goes between 0 and 1, by the length of the audio file, which comes out this outlet of info tilde, to index into play. Now we need a gain tilde. Um, and an easy DAC. Easy DAC. And now we'll connect the super tiny outlets on gain to this easy DAC. And finally, to set the uh, frequency of the phaser, I'm going to just um, take this floating point number box and take 1000 divided by that value. And so what, instead of specifying the frequency here, we're actually specifying the period. So when I type 8000 up here, um, what that means is I want this phaser to loop once every eight seconds. Uh, now, finally, um, we're going to read some stuff into this buffer by sending it the replace 0, negative 1, 1 message. And what this means is read in, read in a new audio file, start at the beginning, go to the end, and use only the first channel. And replace instead of read here means whatever is already in the buffer, whatever buffer length that's specified, ignore it. Um, just make the length of the buffer uh, the length of the audio file. So now it's done. If I turn up the volume here, we should hear some sound. It's crazy what's going on. This is the last beat. Recording sounds with a microphone, making things happen and making things go. It's crazy what. So that's a that's a that's a familiar and enchanting voice. Where have I heard that before? Uh, that was I think I made that recording back when I first got my microphones, and I was uh, really excited about <laughs> about sound. Um, okay, so this is good. We've made good progress. We we've got uh, a sound playing. And so now I'm going to show you a cool little trick that will give us some more insight into what's going on here. Um, make a waveform tilde object. Waveform just displays the contents of a buffer. Um, you set which buffer it displays by sending it a set uh, name message, where name is the name of your buffer. So I send it set loop here, and it's showing the contents of our buffer. Now go ahead and make an H slider. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and make an H slider. Um, line it up with your uh, waveform tilde object. Open up the inspector. Make sure you make it set it to float output and set the range to one. Set the background color to be why are these all out of order? So the background color to be uh, clear, so alpha of zero, and the knob color to be a really electric shade of um, green or whatever. It's up to you. But anyway, now you see we have a little playhead over our uh, buffer, and now in combination with the snapshot object, snapshot uh, takes a signal in and reports the value of that signal at regular intervals. If we connect that to the slider, now we can see where we are in the audio file. So a handy little trick. Happen and making things go. It's okay. So now that we've done that, uh, we're going to get to the meat of this tutorial, which is uh, how to do the looping. And for that, we're going to turn to the modulo operator. Uh, eventually, there we are. So in case you don't know, modulo is fancy math talk for remainder. Uh, so 10 mod 2 is just 10 divided. The remainder of 10 divided by 2. So the remainder of 10 divided by 2 is 0. 
the remainder of 5.5 divided by 2 is 1.5. You get the idea. Now, the reason why modulo is useful is because uh, you can think of it as a wraparound operator because as you'll see, as I drag this value from 0 to 10, uh, the mod of that value goes from 0 to 2, but in this cyclical way. So maybe you can see here how um, uh, this is all going to shake down back in our patch. We're going to use a mod tilde object, so percent tilde, and connect the output of phaser to that. Go ahead and break this connection. And now by setting um, the value here, we determine how, how, how long the loop, uh, our continuous loop, is going to be. We're also going to throw in um, an offset here so that you know we could play not just the first, say, half of the audio file, but um, maybe the you know second half. This is so we can jump ahead rather than just playing loops from the beginning of the audio file. And finally, I'm going to add in one more mod tilde object, mod tilde with an argument of one, that we're not going to um, mess with. This is just so that if we read past the end of the audio file, we jump back to the beginning. So let's see how this works. Um, right now, mod tilde is set to zero, so we're not seeing anything. But if we set this to 0 0.125, say, which is 1 eighth, we should loop 1 eighth of the audio file. Recording sounds, 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 recording Making things happen, making things happen, making things happen, and 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 making things happen. That's most of what I wanted to talk about. Um, now, there are a couple of things you can do. I'm just going to show you a couple of effects that you can throw on here that A, I thought sounded cool, and B, definitely fit the bill of um, de emphasizing the vocal character of the sound and bringing out the rhythmic quality. One of them is to use an object called Freak Shift. Um, freak shift performs inharmonic frequency shifting on the sound. And what I mean by inharmonic is that it destroys the relationship between um, frequency components that gives the sound its, its uh, especially pitched sound, its characteristic, uh, characteristic qualities. So it'll make your voice sound really um, almost robotic uh, as you shift the pitch around. You'll hear what I mean. So here I'm setting the value to 50. Making things happen, 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 uh, degrade tilde is Max MSP's downsampling, or it's not a downsampling object. It's a bit, it's a bit crushing object. Um, and what we're interested in here is the fact that it, you can use it to uh, destroy the bit resolution of the sound. So bit resolution refers to how many bits of data that the computer can use to represent each data point, each sample point. And the fewer points you use, the more distorted the sound gets. So here we're using full 16-bit resolution. But you see, if we drop down to four bits. Now we're introducing some noticeable distortion in the audio because it's snapping to certain values. And down at two bits, you know, forget it. Like, this is not representative of the original waveform at all. Uh, it introduces lots of cool, um, uh, lots of richness to the sound. And if you've ever listened to any dubstep, in particular Justice, um, maybe you can, you can weigh in on my theory that Justice songs are just regular songs passed through uh, degrade tilde. So here's uh, what this sounds like now with both freak shift and degrade tilde working together, <laughs> working like a team. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So there you go. Uh, the stutter effect, um, some cool effects you can throw on there to emphasize it, and a little way to visualize where you are in a waveform. Uh, useful, exciting stuff. You know, usually I would say, hopefully that was interesting and useful, but I know it was interesting and useful. So you're welcome. You're welcome for that interesting and useful tutorial. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, yeah, let me know if there's other stuff you want to see. I'd be more than happy to do it. Uh, have an awesome day, guys, and uh, I'll see you around.